In the big bill stack, we'll keep you in the know. In the big bill stack, we'll fix your techie woes and we'll break the tumble we'll baking till we're all together raking and we'll raise a cup of grog down in the big bill stack. In the big bill stack, come and join our fire crew. In, in the, the big bill stack, we will show you what to do. And we'll hack it till we crack it and we'll tell the world about it and forget to tidy up. That's why it's now a bilge tank. Hello and welcome to episode 019 of the Bilge Tank from Sheffield on Sea. Hi. Hi. Um, happy New Year. Happy New Year. We're back. It's been a few weeks and we're a little unprepared today. But, yeah. uh, but we have had at least two hours of sleep. <laughs> at least. Between us. Yeah. We had to share that. <laughs> There's only one bunk bed here at Pepperoni. Yeah. But we're, yeah, we're in good shape. Yeah. We have leveled up. Pr- pr- um, it was an interesting interview. What's that word? <laughs> <laughs> Comprehensively, that's it, yes. Definitely. So we I, basically had two hours sleep and re-emerged as an involved form of ourselves. That's exactly right. So you're like John Saw now. I'm like Beaches Up. And Phil is like Philamanda. <laughs> <laughs> yes, quite. Should we start with the news? <laughs> <laughs> Let's start, Let's with, the start news. with the news. Stuff we love. Can we go to the surface screen, Paul? We can go to the surface screen. Let's kick off with Smarty Pie Touch. Arr, that's this, another surface screen. That's another surface screen. There we go, the surface screen. Um, this campaign launched two days ago, and we tweeted about it, and like the whole world retweeted it. Brilliant. Um, yeah. It's the same guys who made the Smarty Pie case, <coughs> which is the Lego compatible case for the... Uh, I think they only ever did it for B+. There was never like a B version, was there? Yeah, B+, plus 2, it isn't it? Yeah. Um, really great case, really, really popular. It's got a nice little camera mount as well. Yeah. And this. The camera mount's going to come in black as well. You know, what with the this? update. Yeah. So, Tom, nice. the guy behind it, it looks like he's. I didn't realise he's a professional kind of product designer, which I think is why he's turning out these super slick things that actually fit and are shipped yeah. within like a few months because normally injection molding stuff is, yeah, a pain. But it's he's hard. just. He's, yeah, he's, he's made a slick thing here. And we totally take credit for that. Overnight success, <laughs> simply because we tweeted it, and then Raspberry Pi retweeted it, and then everyone retweeted it, and yeah, everyone agreed it is slick. And it does look slick. This is the first I've seen it as well. Is right. it? I've been That's in the black first hole first for the last month of it. Um, yeah. There's some really nice features about this. Obviously, we make a display frame for the Pi. Um, mm-hmm. We specifically engineered ours to be like as, as cheap and slim and tiny and colourful as we could possibly make it, and that was kind of our spec. This goes in a completely different direction, and. You know, it's cool. It's, it, there's a reason for this to exist as well. Um, he's done some really nice things, like uh, from the original Smarty Pie case, he's brought back the Lego compatibility. So there's like a little stud strip on the front where you can attach your own stuff. Yep. Um, there's a place on the back where you can mount the camera module, so it becomes like a little webcam style thing above mm-hmm. the screen. So yeah, have it at the top there, so it can go above the screen. Uh, yeah. Where are you pointing? Oh yes. There. Yeah, there. I'll, I'll find a better picture. Uh, there we go. There we go. So there, <laughs> above <laughs> the screen. Oh, I can see of, that now. Yeah. You put the camera mount there and have it facing you oh, in selfie okay. mode, or mount it on the front, or you can. There's going to be a place so you don't have to have the Lego if you are a joyless, dry individual who works in a place <laughs> where there's no fun. So um, here it is from the front with the with the camera mounted, the webcam mounted, and also uh, the kind of Lego strip then side. Mm. Which is kind of cool because you have your mini fix attached to the front, and who doesn't want that, frankly? Good. And here's the Apple shot. <laughs> um, this uh, interestingly, you say the hinge is the GoPro hinge. It's a, yeah, he's using the GoPro hinges, which is smart choice. Is this uh, is this base plate actually a GoPro product? Though? No, 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 no. You attach the two GoPro hinges there. Um, this looks onto the base plate. Into the base plate. Yeah, but the GoPro bit is on the other side. It's on the side of the thing. Have a look. Get another picture. So you see there, you've got two. So maybe they're not actually GoPro hinges. They're just GoPro hinges. Compatible. <laughs> Compatible, folks. Um, <laughs> Interoperability yeah. is good. I think the the nice thing about this and with the Smartify case is that I think Tom he takes like an interesting approach to his design because the obvious choice, kind of like the way we did it, was to have the pie mounted right on the back of the display, exactly yeah. where they left the mounting posts. He's kind of pulled it out to the side, which gives you better access to the ports. Um, you can still fit a hat on the back, which I guess makes sense for some add-ons, not so much for the visual ones. Um, but it's, back yeah, lighting, man. it just looks Unicorn nice. Hat. That's your own kind of Hyperion setup there. Ooh, yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. But if you see, for $3 more, you can get minimal GoPro mounts, which are mounted to the wall. 
So they that's this plate here, right? No, no, there's a smaller plate. Well, there's Small. effectively not plates at all. There you go, those two things there. Oh, no. ah, okay. And if you've got other GoPro type mount stuff, it'll slot into those two slots and so use the same bolts. Just to clarify, that he explicitly says it's GoPro compatible, does he? Or it just looks like it? Yeah, if you yeah. search for GoPro, go on, I dare you search I, on a Microsoft <laughs> tablet. I'm not searching. <laughs> um, but no, I really like it. And, um, we're really keen. As soon as we saw this, we contacted him and said, you know, make sure we're hooked up Tom, as a distributor. Tom. Tom. Come on, Tom. Can we have some, Tom? Tom. Um, but no, I think it's going to be really popular. It's, it's a great idea. Uh, it's going to work really nicely. So we're very excited to get it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, cool product. Yep. Nice work. He's got a split USB cable as well, just like us. Yeah, it's got ferrites on it. <laughs> it's got a connector. <laughs> no, no, I think that's just a, a, just the, just the yeah, split yeah. kind of barrel, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, oh, basal landing as well. Nice. Base mounts. Yep. Yeah, so it's, a, it's a really nice campaign. Yeah, Smash through its target in 24 hours. Expect it to go quite a lot further, really. Yeah, and was he like another tier? He's got more tiers. Has he added more tiers? Yeah, scroll down. Oh no, it's just a no. It's, no, it's just a non early bird tier, is it? I think Reward so, two. Yeah. For twenty three dollars. It's not even. A, it's not a bad price, is That's it? Surprisingly yeah, cheap. I think it's excellent. Looking forward to it. Cool. Great stuff. Uh, next up, got this great project that's on Hacker Day, where a guy's turned uh, three amp meters or amp meters into a clock. Mm -hmm. And I just love this. It's kind of it, it's just an awesome little hack. So obviously the uh, ranges on the ammeters have been turned into. Oh, hello. <laughs> Where are we going? Um, I'll just show you a big. Have uh, been turned into uh, visualizers for kind of hours, minutes, and seconds. So I assume he's printed custom plates for the fronts of these meters, and then it's using some sort of DAC to turn the actual clock data into uh, a voltage that the um, well, uh, yeah, a signal that the ammeters can read. Mm -hmm. um, I think it said it was a MSP 340 uh, based. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a nice little, uh, nice little toy. Mm. Like that. We need to build one. It'll look great on the back wall. Yeah. Be awesome. <sighs> Should have bought those while I was in Germany. Still got the Nixie tubes to fire up. Oh, yeah. oh from your, your yeah. hoard of Berlin make weird fair. reclaimed yeah. German hardware. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did have lots of uh, meters there. <coughs> um, and meters and things. Yeah. yeah. They Next nice. time. They're really easy to work with as well. I think you basically just put a voltage across them and it, it, proportional to the voltage is where the mm -hmm. um, where the meter will end up. So yeah, we should get some in the shop. We must still make Good luck, yeah. yeah. They're still making those retro bubble displays, so yeah, apparently yeah. so. Um, and the last thing that I saw that was kinda interesting, uh, until we get onto what Phil's gonna demo, was um, just this little uh, tutorial on how to use a DLP projector. So DLP projectors are basically like a transparent LCD with a powerful bulb behind it. Yep. Uh, and this guy's using it to actually photo etch PCBs, which is, I don't know, I, it's the first time I'd seen this, I suspect it's been done before, but it's, it's a really nice idea. Well, it used to be the basis of the resin printers. The 3D resin printers like used to use a, type stuff. Yeah, yeah, prototypes yeah. like that worked on a DLP exposure. Because mm -hmm. um, they've got incredible black levels, they get a very good sharp exposure. So they get used a lot, and this is using it for a 2D thing, essentially, as a photo expose unit. Yeah, so I suspect the, the cleverness is basically in the optics and getting it well in focus at the distance that you want to oh, yeah, it's just get like, the edge. It's just like trimming a projector screen. I think the thing you have to look for is a LED that actually goes into the UV and its emission spectra, because mm -hmm. some of them don't, some of them fall short, and you don't get a very good result. But some of them just end up in the UV spectrum, and they're great for exposing things like this on circuit boards. Game on. Well, apparently the um, the display he was using was 1024 by 768, which for a 10 centimeter square PCB gets you four mil resolution, which is pretty bloody good. I mean, it doesn't yeah. help you with things like through buyers and stuff, but yeah. for four mils, stuff, that's mils. Not yeah, four not millimeters. Thousandths of an inch. Thousandths um, of an inch, yes. Which is pretty, pretty skinny, really. For most hobbyist stuff, you wouldn't go close to that. So it's, no. uh, yeah, really nice little hack, uh, nice idea. Mm. Liked it. Yep. Um, the next thing we were going to have a look at is that obviously zero is still the hot topic. <laughs> Everyone really wants a zero. Is. Everyone's talking about <coughs> it. Um, mm -hmm. But someone found a way to turn the zero into a USB host mode so that uh, you can actually use things like virtual Ethernet and stuff to talk to it directly, which is great for the zero because when you're prototyping and you've got no kind of connectivity without using a Wi Fi dongle, uh, it gives you that kind of flexibility. So Phil's got. Uh, a zero set up here. I've got it, but I can't make your. Um, oh, no, that's fine. We don't need that. You can plug your unicorn hat in. <laughs> so the Pi's always been based on what's basically a mobile chipset 
for routers and mainly mobile phone type projects. And one of the things that does include is a USB host mode, always has, and it's been used for various things like uh, programming compute modules, we've used it for, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, <laughs> no Windows 10, I do not want to automatically restart now. We're on the internet live. <laughs> it's still doing that. Bill, if you're listening, talk to somebody. I don't think it cares anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, this is just really handy because obviously it means you can have like a single cable solution to your laptop or PC. Um, you can have full network access to the Pi. So this isn't like some crummy shim. You can SSH into it. You can connect to it via um, you know, a web browser or whatever. Use HTTP. It is a full networking stack. Um, which is just great, it's perfect prototype. It's fast as well, it's like really nice and fast and you can get your internet connection back up from your Pi Zero by your laptop or your computer to the, the World Wide Web. This yeah. Is, yeah, it's going to be a damn sight quicker than the uh, 100 meg on the standard Pi, I would imagine. No reason it wouldn't That's be. Point. I wonder if there's any way I can meter that. I've been using uh, a, a, a testing utility for testing those uh, hubs, so I have to give that a go. Yep. See what kind of throughput it gets. So I think Andrew Andrew <coughs> Mahorn's kind of leading that effort at the moment, isn't he? It They're starts off as trail. a thread on the uh, the Raspberry Pi somewhere GitHub repo, I think, as well. Yep. Um, and then GBA man Andrew Mahorn picked it up and wrote a tutorial, uh, which is which at is right here. Yep. Pi.gbaman.info. Oh, nice. That is the one. And um, uh, Adafruit have been doing some stuff as well. Turn that into an image that you can just install and it'll be ready to go. And oh, I'm excellent. sure some other people are doing the same thing. And I've um, got a config that works really nicely for me, which makes it try DHCP. And if it fails DHCP, it will fall back to a static IP address. So if I connect it to my laptop, which has to have DHCP because of Mac internet connection sharing, and if it doesn't, it throws a wobbly and nothing works. And I can unplug it from there and plug it to a Linux computer, which doesn't really, I don't want to run a DHCP server, it's too much fat. Mm. So I just let it run a static IP address and then I'll set up IP tables to forward the connection. It works really nicely between different computers. One cool. thing that's nice about this is because so nice. it's a slightly quirky and weird way to interact with Pi, but it's actually really easy to set up. And it's not just something for Linux users and Mac users. You can do this on Windows, you just install the virtual Ethernet drivers and away you go. You can basically connect to it straight away. Um, so it's, it's really, really handy. I think once people get it up and running well, then the, the combination of a small USB mass storage device with Ethernet will mean that everything you need to get going will actually be <coughs> on the Pi. Mm -hmm. So you plug it in, you get a little disk that pops up and says, here's how to get started. Because this is what I really loved about the BeagleBone Black when it first came out. You could just plug in a cable, plug it into your laptop, up will pop a disk and you click on a website and it opens up a website and says your bigger one black is connected, click here and you click here and it pops up a terminal in your browser and you're connected and away you That's go. That's kind of interesting actually, so maybe like yeah. a custom image With that cloud just sets you up and stuff like that on it. Because the great thing about this is it means you can have the zero in an installation, say with your unicorn hat, uh, and if you want to change something, you can just tip up with a laptop, plug into the USB, SSH in, make changes, walk away again. It's like, it's a, it's a cracking solution for um, modifying and kind of maintaining Pi Zeros embedded into projects uh, without having to kind of take out the SD card, go and find a B plus or something, get it all started, or uh, Pi 2 obviously, uh, get it all started up and um, uh, well, make changes you B want. B plus if you out. want something the same. Actually, yeah, yeah, a B plus would be a good idea because obviously you'd be mimicking the hardware more closely. Yeah. So you wouldn't suddenly find your amazing effects ran at one frame a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm you can do way, way more with this. It's not just virtual Ethernet, though that's probably the most exciting. You can turn your Pi into a mass storage device, you can do virtual serial ports, you can do um, like MIDI, oh, all sorts hey, of things. Yeah, so Phil, that's, uh, essentially, Phil's working with this as if it was plugged into the same network, uh, you know, into a network with his laptop. Um, so that's kind of awesome. It's really handy when you're on a train. <laughs> yeah. And you don't want to use serial cables. This sounds perfect for Rogan are awful. with his kind of crazy setups yeah, of serial his, uh, cables and things. Yeah, but the currently nomadic Roman, Rogan. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, on that note, just say hi to Rogue and also. Oh, he's there. Oh, hello. Yeah, we've got lots of new people in today. So we've got Adri, who says, say me hello. So, <laughs> hello. Adri, hi, dude. Or do that. Ahmed, Ahmed, not quite sure there. But uh, hello, welcome, and you're from Spain. So, yeah, sorry we can't ship quicker there, but things keep going missing. But thank you for watching. And the people from Germany, you'll see this later. <laughs> yes, yeah, speaking no of which, James through a VPN says uh, hi, 
and the, the call is open for Make Fair Berlin. So if you want to turn up at Make Fair Berlin and make it even bigger and better this year, look at their call for makers. So if you Google Make Fair Berlin, you'll find that. And we will definitely be there. Yeah. Um, one thing is about setting this up, we will get an article up on the learning portal. To, yep. to get you set up with this in the simplest possible way. So kind of we'll probably skim over most of the detail of it, but just do this, do that, do the other, and away we go. Yep. <laughs> I try to pace my config. <laughs> it it just nice oh man, we've got an inception again. Yeah, let's not go inception, it's very scary. <laughs> um, so what else we got? Um, that was basically it. I mean, the the uh, only bit of news we've got is that the ESP8266 FAT, we've just ordered the production PCBs. So cool. this should be available in three weeks' time. It's gold. It is, well, yeah, it is, it is gold. It yeah. is gold. Um, we've been working on a custom firmware for this because the AT firmware sucks. It's horrible. <laughs> um, and also the other thing about the AT firmware is it doesn't let you uh, do anything with the GPIO or the ADC channel. So we're doing a custom firmware that will let you actually interact with, the, obviously, the Wi-Fi network and do HTTP requests and things. Should we carefully give it another also, go? Just in case you can give it a go. If so you if, like you're, if you're used to doing things the way we do on Explorer Hat, which is kind of internet.connect or motor.forwards, forwards. Um, you'll love John's firmware. Cause. Yeah, we'll have something just like that, like yeah. a Python wrapper. The firmware itself, um, obviously, is it's kind of talking serial to it, but we'll put a nice <coughs> wrapper around that and make it. Yeah. Maybe that light shouldn't be on. Well, I think it's just the pin state of one of your pins for however your Pi is set up, which must be different to mine. Uh, yeah. We're still working on the software. <laughs> um, so is that a pin that I should change? But the other thing that's kind of cool is that we've written a little proxy server to go with it so that you can actually set up your Pi to treat our proxy server as the HTTP server for the Pi, which means that you can actually just make standard HTTP <coughs> requests. So it's connecting, but it never yeah, gets any further cool. than that. So I think just before New Year's, you were showing me the onion loading over that and just that. Yeah, basically yeah. you can load, like, you can go into Epiphany browser and you can load a website and have it all come over your ESP8266 fat, which is kind of cool for Pi Zero. It's yeah. more practical for kind of making API requests or something. Oh yeah, yeah. So you've got your Pi Zero in the field, you might use the analog channel from the fact to uh, log some sort of sensor value, you can then post that up to an API. Using something like that as an actual proxy is way beyond you got close what you'd camera, expect. Or we have not close up camera, it's not very close up, we might need to oh, just do a zoom zoomy. There you go. It's also attached to Phil's laptop, so I have limited, <laughs> uh, limited movement. Um, but yeah, basically, obviously you've got your ESP8266 module at the front. Um, and other than that, all we've done is broken out some of the GPIO from there. So you've got, I think, six IO channels, the ADC channel, and you've also got 3v3 and, and ground reference um, points as well. And there's a little prototyping area on the back, so you can kind of build your, because obviously with the Pi Zero, you could solve this directly to the Pi Zero, super slim. Yep. Actually build your circuit on the prototyping area, so like your light sensors, whatever. Make the whole thing as tiny as you can. Stick it all in the tic-tac box because that's what everyone's doing these days with the Pi Zero. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, where you go. Nobody's Start logging your data. We haven't seen Altoids tins yet because there no. was always a bit of a beef that the Pi was slightly too large for a st standard Altoids tin. But now you can fit like six in there. You can fit it in the slim. The, I think Starbucks do a quite a slim mint tin that how opens do, at the top. How do people usually deal with so like your 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 pin headers or whatever on the underside? Is the coating on the Altoids tin good enough to avoid any sort of short You scene in something there. Right, okay, so you, <laughs> you, you put down a bed it. for it, essentially, yeah. and then plunk yeah. it in. Do you know what's yeah, kind of cool. your head watch? It's always kept in the thing. What, what the light's on? The it's four, BCM4. Four. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Oh, hello from Bangladesh as well. Hassan. Hi. Uh, yeah, because you'll have it in programming mode, I think. <laughs> it's output, isn't it? It's output. Oh. I haven't done raw Phil, Phil's there. live debugging. He's never seen this code before. <laughs> it's never run on his pipe before. And we just don't know. Yeah. It's a bit bad that we can't see you debugging. Should that be high or low? Uh, it should that, be high to leave it in non reset state, I think. We'll figure it out. Uh, and the other thing we've got is Drum Hat is now on the store. Available. I've very subtly Ooh. featured it on the front page as well. On yeah. the front page of the website? Yeah. Let's bring up the website. There we go. Drum hat. Lovely. There you go. So this is uh, one of Phil's um, products. It's really nice. It's got little under underlit um, pads. So each pad has got an LED underneath that shines through when it's in contact. Though you can control them yourself. If you want they to. came out so well. They yeah. do. Well, it's lovely. 
I think we've seen one customer at least get a lot of these and a lot of pies to go with them. Really? So I don't know whether that's for a classroom setup Ooh, nice. or whether they're just intending on having the full Phil Collins in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> did they order a gorilla suit at the same time? They did actually order a gorilla suit. Wow. Okay. We only had the one in stock and they, they nabbed it. Theory confirmed. Yeah. There we go. Um, but yeah, drum hat is lovely. It's, it's also super cheap because it really is, you know, it's eight channels of capacitive touch. I did arm and arm a little awesome. bit about making this one because it is so <coughs> simple and so... So basic, it kind of feels, but it's, it's, it's turned out so yeah. nice. Again, we need to make this a t-shirt because I think, I think that would thing. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's one thing we're going to do this year. We're going to sell out and do some cool merch. Definitely. Oh, yeah. oh God, I've just damned it by calling it cool, haven't I? <laughs> a little bit. But, yeah. yeah. Any other resolutions? It's a bit naff, but what's the one thing you're most going to do this year, differently to last year? I'm going to spend more time in Eagle. Okay. Eagle. That's my resolution. In fact, I was at, yeah, I was in Eagle at four a.m. this morning. So I, maybe not that much more time, but <laughs> more time definitely. Yeah, Phil. Um, yeah. My New Year's resolution is to stick post-it notes all over the wall. Okay. Ooh. Basically, with anything on everywhere. or just post-it um, notes. I think I'm going to write stuff on them. Okay. Right. My organisational skills are tr traditionally horrible, and trying to organise through any computer-based system is just—they're all terrible. They all get in your way. Yeah. So post-it notes everywhere. That's going to be my thing. I think for me, it's just going to be doing things rather than leaving things undone. <laughs> I think uh, November, December, October, November, December, it was just a wild, wild ride. And yeah, we we did we did a lot of stuff. Yeah, it was it was heavy, wasn't it? But Have we got, got a plan for the IoT fat? Uh, sorry. Mm. Sorry, have we got a plan IOT for the fat. IoT Garth fat? Gareth Terrace, have you got a plan for the IoT fat? So there are two things. There is the ESP2866, that we just things, that's an IT fat. That will be around in about three weeks. Yep. Manufacturing going sensibly. There is also Phil's EnviroFat, which... Wow, I'm also working on uh, IoT fat. Are you? <laughs> yeah. I don't know what he's talking about, though. Okay. Whether yeah. it's something we've... Have we talked about something? I'm not sure, but... Mm. Yeah. Quickly. Now, IoT fat is something else as well, isn't it? So th there's going to be graduations of IoT. Um, yeah. um, we're going to also pick up the conversation with the guys from Initial State because they've been lovely. Um, yeah, cool so guys. expect a whole IoT section. <laughs> but IoT for everyone. We're not talking about fridges with kind of chips stuck on them randomly like Swarovski crystals or anything. Yeah. We want understandable stuff that people can stick together and make happen. Well, things that are cool as well because you like, you know, home automation is, is, is kind of interesting... Uh, Interesting space. It's not as popular in the UK as it is in America. Yeah. But you can make a. You can certainly make a start with that kind of thing oh, by starting to log thing. your environment. And yeah. This thing you're doing that's completely different to Phil's thing. Yeah. yeah. But EnviroHat is coming also. That's kind yeah. of cool too. Oh, uh, EnviroFat. Uh, uh, that one's more about the sensors. The IoT one that's coming is more about driving things like relays and uh, stuff like that. So it's going to be awesome. Um, there is a Bosch sensor. So Bosch do the pressure and temperature sensors. Yeah, like BMP two eight. They've also got one that does gas particulates in the air. That should be coming out now. And I've just got a canary for home. And it's amazing how doing the pie stuff and building your own stuff, getting something like the canary, which is perfectly shiny, and finding it so locked off and hard to work with that you just want to make your own stuff. So definitely want to get that Bosch sensor working so yeah, we can effectively actually, get a pie canary. You came in and you said, oh, i got a canary, i got a canary. Check out the camera feed for my home. Yeah, and here's my it's only, it's only got my data for the last 24 hours. It sucks. Yeah. It's just like, I'm going to build my own. Yeah, I don't need this. Yeah, so I think we can get open source Canary um, that doesn't try to charge you for cloud storage so much. Actually, they're fairly reasonable, but they all do it. They all try and upsell you on the storage of video and things. And I think that's one thing that yeah. Pi could absolutely surpass and excel at. Definitely. That's the, it's the business model, though, isn't it? Basically, sell you the yeah. hardware at a, a modest margin and then make it on the services, yeah. which isn't entirely yeah. unfair. But yeah, yeah it is what it Basically, is. it's just when these things eventually, somebody's got to lose in it. They can't yeah. all win in the end. Well, this is the problem. As soon as you're tied to like that proprietary system, yep. the second someone goes down, you know, the second the company, the provider goes down, yep. all the hardware is basically junk. It's that happened for kind of with a little printer and all that. Very sad. Um, yeah, this is why we look at things like Fant from SparkFun. Yeah. What uh, happened with that, that new products that there? Phone? That was new products. I was only wanting to mention that we got the new Subaru with magnets kit in yep. stock, um, which is kind of awesome because as you build your Subaru around the magnets, they're very very strong. Um, but it means that you can now kind of like mount a magnet on something, mount a Subaru with a magnet on something else, and, and just have, have a permanent kind of 
yeah. place to leave things, tools. Definitely make more use of that this year. Yes. I need to repair my boots cool. anyway. They're coming apart and they need some Sugru. Yeah. Um, we've got the papyrus up now. We just have one skew of the e-ink. Um, there's been some good e-inks. Percheron, Neil has got a very good one. Um, and obviously PySupply have started shipping papyrus now. Um, we've actually gone for the one with the medium sized screen simply because it doesn't overhang the kind of footprints at all. Because yeah. we find these are pretty fragile. So basically these e-ink screens come in a set, um, set variety of sizes. You see so the same sizes everywhere.